Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. As always, I am your host, Brett Murphy, and for today's video, it is going to be another new movie review. And I am going to be reviewing Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, which is the third film in this new Wizarding World movie franchise. So it has been four whole years since the release of the second film in this franchise, The Crimes of Grindelwald. And this movie picks up just about right where we left off. We follow our same group of heroes trying to stop the new big bad of this franchise, Grindelwald, as he tries to raise his army of pure blood wizards to attack the Muggle world. If you were a longtime fan of my channel, you will know that I actually did review The Crimes of Grindelwald when it first came out, and I wasn't a big fan. I did just recently rewatch it in preparation for this third movie, and I still don't love it. So I did go into this new movie with my expectations appropriately adjusted. So, how did it turn out? Well, we're about to find out. As always with my new movie reviews, this will be 110% spoiler free so you can proceed with confidence. Before I hop into the actual review itself, I just wanted to let you all know that I have an entire playlist dedicated to all of my new movie reviews, so be sure to check that out, and I guarantee you'll find something you like. And so without further ado, let's hop right into things. The first positive is that I was truly overjoyed to see the return of, and more of a focus on, some of our main characters like Newt and Jacob. Despite the negatives that you'll hear later on in this video, I do genuinely enjoy these movies. And I love these characters and the wizarding world. I also liked the increased focus on some of the characters that I didn't feel got enough love in the first sequel, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Like Jude Law, who is exceptional as a young Albus Dumbledore, and Newt's brother Theseus, played by actor Callum Turner, who I also personally thought was great. Most of the newcomers really surprised me too. Even though Grindelwald as a character is now technically being portrayed by his third actor, Mads Mikkelsen effortlessly slides right into the role, and I truly do believe that he portrayed this character better than Johnny Depp did. And that's no disrespect to Johnny Depp, I really do wish that the reason he was let go wasn't the reason that he was let go for, and I love the man as an actor, but I honestly would have just preferred if it was Mads from the very beginning. The dude just plays a damn good villain. One character in this movie that I do wish we got a bit more of, but I was pleasantly surprised surprised to see make an appearance, and quite enjoyed the performance was Richard Coyle as Aberforth Dumbledore. The other new addition that I loved and was easily one of the standouts in this movie was Jessica Williams as Professor Lolly Hicks. Look, I'm gonna be straight up honest with all of you, returning to this world will always bring me an immeasurable sense of joy. Director David Yates does not miss a single beat as he returns to the wizarding world once again for his seventh time in the director's chair. The score by James Newton Howard is is magnificent and there are some awesome nostalgic beats in there too. The cinematography and visuals are wonderful, Hogwarts and Hogsmeade once again was just brilliant, as well as exploring new areas never seen before, still manages to deliver that unmatchable sense of wonder. The story in this one is marginally better than that of its predecessor, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Writer Steve Clove steps back into the franchise for the first time since Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 way back in 2011, and he manages for the most part to clean up the mess and loose threads that the last one had created. Though it isn't perfect, it does offer up much better pacing, more coherent and purposeful storytelling, a bigger sense of adventure, and much higher stakes. And now for the last positive that I wanted to address. Without getting into any spoilers, of course, I really liked the way that this movie ended. Warner Bros. has publicly stated a fourth Fantastic Beasts movie solely relies on how well this one does at the box office. Personally, I hope that it does well and we get another one of these movies because I genuinely enjoy them despite their flaws, but back to the point, and that is that the ending of this movie works quite well with that in mind. Because if this is indeed it, then it's a nice little trilogy with a mostly satisfying ending. But if not, and a fourth movie does get greenlit, then they left some things pretty open-ended, so there is still plenty of room to explore and go off on a brand new adventure. And now for the negatives, and honestly there aren't a ton, but the ones that I do have with the movie are pretty hefty. 
The first is that sadly, despite the better writing, this movie still has so many characters that just get brushed aside or completely forgotten altogether. Tina Goldstein is barely in the movie. Credence basically just stops being important like 30 minutes in. Yusuf does virtually nothing and really has no personality at all this time. Queenie is barely in it and anytime she is, well, anything she does feels undercooked and a little forced. The next one, and it's a pretty big negative. It's definitely a bigger negative for some fans out there than it is for me, of course, because it's not my fight to fight. But I do recognize it and I want to address it. Why are so many major studios afraid of gay people? Like, why are they so afraid to admit that gay people exist and gay relationships are real and normal? Warner Bros. cut out some of the homosexual dialogue for the Chinese release. And honestly, I don't even see why. Nothing is shown and barely anything at all is said. I just don't see why the studio won't fully commit to this obviously very, very important pinnacle to the story relationship and put as much effort into it as they do all of the other relationships even within this franchise. But the relationship that is at the center of the story between Dumbledore and Grindelwald just gets brushed over. Like, there's things that are slightly hinted at, but because it's a gay relationship, it gets no focus, love, or appreciation whatsoever. And the last negative I have is, once again, despite what I said about this writing indeed being better, some of the storytelling just still feels very disjointed. The ending seems just kind of weird and rushed. The main group's big master plan feels like it relies way, way, way too heavily on so many conveniences and coincidences. And I get that the point of the plan was to be spontaneous and unpredictable, but there are just some things in here that feel a touch too far-fetched. Steve Cloves undoubtedly did his best, but this series as a whole still feels like it lacks any real direction. They made the first one and it was successful, so they said, okay, let's make this a five-part series, but it continues to feel like they never really had a plan for it to begin with and thus they kind of just keep making it up as they go along. At the end of the day, I am happy to report that I did actually have a pretty good time with Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Definitely a better time than The Crimes of Grindelwald. But there's just no denying that no matter how much they try, you can definitely still feel like this franchise lacks any sort of real direction and there are still a lot of underlying issues. Therefore, with all that being said, I'm going to be giving Fantastic Beasts, The Secret of Dumbledore, a 7.5 out of 10. So that is all for today's video, folks. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with my review. While you're at it, feel free to let while you're at it, feel free to let me know what you would have scored Fantastic Beasts, The Secret of Dumbledore out of 10. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more content, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that little bell icon. That way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And as always, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. And that's a wrap. Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you. And while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.